O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As you know, the word Advent means coming, because during the season of Advent, we are preparing our hearts for Jesus to come. And so, with joy, we celebrate Jesus' first coming when he was born for us on Christmas Day. And with hope, we look forward to Jesus' second coming when he comes again to judge the living and the dead and to welcome us into his kingdom. And with faith, we wait expectantly in the here and the now for Jesus coming into our lives today to answer our prayers and to bring us healing and to bring us peace. And when Jesus shows up in our lives, as he always does, sometimes we find that he's everything we imagine being more. And the Christian life seems so fresh and exciting and full of life. But other times, it seems like Jesus doesn't meet our expectations, or he doesn't answer our prayers in the way that we want, and we wonder, kind of like John the Baptist here in today's Gospel reading, is this the one that I was waiting for? Well, we can feel a bit let down, because we find that how Jesus actually is doesn't always match how we think Jesus ought to be. For example, a lot of us have this idea in our heads that the Christian life is kind of like a contract, right? Like, like I have my part to do and God has his part to do. So my part is to live a good, faithful Christian life, you know, go to church, read my Bible and pray, and then God's supposed to do his part. He's supposed to answer my prayers and, and remove all my problems, make all my problems go away. Real simple arrangement, right? But we fall into that way of thinking that says, if I keep my end of the bargain, then God is supposed to keep his end of the bargain, otherwise he's falling asleep on the job. We start to get that way of thinking, right? But the problem with that way of thinking, there's a lot of problems about it, is that it's wrong. And it's not even biblical. And worse for us, it, it sets us up for being angry with God and becoming disappointed with God because we think that Jesus isn't doing his job. He's falling asleep at the wheel. And we see, we see, Jesus, I don't think you understand how this is supposed to work. I'm praying like crazy. I'm reading my Bible. I'm, I'm going to church. I'm involved in all kinds of ministries. But my life is still a mess. And you haven't answered my prayers. And my life is now more stressful than it was before because I'm so busy serving you. Jesus, you're falling asleep at the wheel. And like John the Baptist here in verse 3 of our gospel reading, we too begin to doubt. Don't we too begin to wonder... Jesus, are you really the one I was waiting for to come into my life? Or should I expect someone else? You see, John the Baptist was disappointed in Jesus because in his mind, Jesus was supposed to be the conquering king that would drive out the Romans and set the captives free. But look, the Romans are still here. And now he himself is a captive in jail. And worse than that, he's about to be executed. Jesus, are you falling asleep on the job here? Are you really the one I was waiting for? I'm keeping my end of the bargain. I'm serving God. Why aren't you keeping your end of the bargain, he was thinking. So here we see John the Baptist was disappointed because the Jesus he expected in his head was completely different from the Jesus he was actually experiencing in his life. But here's the problem. Who's the one with the problem here? This is the question. Who's the one who really needed to change? It's not Jesus. Jesus isn't the one who had the problem here. It was John the Baptist who needed to change his grand ideas about what Jesus should be doing in his life and when he should be doing it. In the same way when we find ourselves getting disappointed in God because Jesus isn't acting quickly enough, he's not doing what we think he ought to be doing, we're the ones with the problem, not Jesus. We're the ones who need to change our heart and our mind and allow God to simply be God. So when John the Baptist's disciples come to Jesus here in verse 4, and they begin to share his doubts with them of whether Jesus really is the Messiah or not, Jesus feels no need to explain himself. He doesn't say, you know, John the Baptist, you're right. You know far better than I what you need in your life right now. What was I thinking? No, Jesus doesn't say that. He simply looks at those disciples and says in verse 4 of our gospel reading, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. In other words, Jesus says here, you may think I've fallen asleep. You may think I've fallen asleep at the wheel, John, but I haven't. 
Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I am busy showing up and working in the lives of my people. For the blind are seeing, the dead are being raised, the good news is being proclaimed. But the thing is, I'm here to do my Father's will, not your will. I'm here to follow my Father's agenda, not your agenda. And I'm here to follow my Father's timetable, not your timetable. So go back, Jesus says in verse 6, and tell John the Baptist that blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. In other words, don't stumble because the real Jesus that you're experiencing is different from the two-dimensional Jesus that we've come to expect in our heads. Like John the Baptist, sometimes we too need to learn to let go of our grand ideas of what Jesus should be doing in our lives and when he should be doing them. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me, he says. But how can we keep ourselves from stumbling? Again, the answer is we don't focus on the things we think Jesus should have done and hasn't. Instead, as we see here in verse 4, we go back and report to ourselves what we've heard and seen. We report to ourselves what we've heard and seen Jesus actually do. In other words, we remember our testimony. We remember our story. We remember his story in our lives. All the ways that Jesus has already provided for me. How he's already healed me. The ways he's already delivered me. How he's forgiven me all my sins and how he's continuing to set me free from those sins. We keep ourselves from stumbling and we protect ourselves from disappointment with God by focusing not on what he hasn't done, but on what he has done. We go back and we report to ourselves we've heard and seen. And that's the testimony that keeps us grounded in the storm. Because in verse, like in verse 5, we too were once spiritually blind, but now we can see our need for Jesus. And we too were once spiritually lame, but now through the power of the Holy Spirit, we too are being made whole. We have a testimony. We too were once spiritually deaf, but now we can hear the Holy Spirit speak to us how much God loves us. And we too were once spiritually dead, but now we've been raised up to new and eternal life in Jesus Christ. And the good news has been preached to us so that we too who are poor in spirit can now say we are rich in God. We have a testimony. And as you remember your testimony and how much you've tasted God's goodness in the past, this will help you learn to expect that the darkness will pass and that you will taste His goodness again. You ever heard what the acronym HOPE stands for? H-O-P-E. H-O-P-E. Hold on, pain ends. Hold on, pain ends. So if you find yourself getting a little discouraged this Christmas season because you feel like God's not keeping his end of the bargain, then remember Jesus' word here, John the Baptist. Go back and report to yourself what you've heard and seen. Remember your testimony. In other words, just as Jesus has delivered you in the past, know that he will deliver you again. Hold on. Pain ends. Just be prepared for him to deliver you in a way that you least expect. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it's hard. It's hard waiting. We pray that you would help us to keep up remembering all the ways you've been so good to us and so faithful to us. It's easy to complain and gripe and grumble about how things aren't the way we want them to be right now, how we think you're not acting quickly enough for us, but help us to focus on the ways you have been good to us, how you have delivered us, and how we tasted and seen that you are good, and help us to remember that this too shall pass and that we will taste your goodness again. Help us to remember our testimony. Help us to remember your goodness to us. Help us to keep holding on to you until the pain ends. You are a good God. Help us to wait as you come to us. We wait for you, Lord Jesus. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.